Yeah. yeah. Worldwide. 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 You division next. Welcome back to StreetGangs.com SGTV. What I got for you next is an exclusive interview with film actor DeAndre Bonds, who appeared in Get on the Bus, Lockdown, Three Strikes, The Wood, among other movies. But in 2001, his career took a turn for the worse when he was charged with murder and then later convicted for manslaughter. I caught up with Mr. Bonds in a California state prison via telephone to ask him about what his life has been like for the last several years in this four-part interview. So check it out. When did you start getting into the acting business and how did you get started off? Oh, well, um, I started acting when I was... Well, I had a dream, first of all, of being an actor and that, 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 that took place you know, in my youth. I was around 15, 14, 15 years old. I used to see plays at school and I entered in a couple plays and, and you know, I had to, I guess the acting bug bit me and I wanted to always do that. I didn't know how I was going to do it. You know, I didn't have nobody to guide me on the right path towards, you know, being an actor. However, I was, you know, just walking, doing things right, I guess you could say, in my life. You know, I wasn't gang banging, I wasn't selling drugs, I wasn't hanging out on corners or none of that. So I guess God would guide my path. Uh, not, not I guess, I know he would. But, you know, I used to sell candy. That was my hustle. You know, I used this to... This recorded call is from an inmate I used to, at a California correctional facility. I used to catch the bus out to Hollywood, uh, 15, 16 years old, go to the 99 cent store, buy like twenty dollars worth of candy and I start selling candy out there on Sunset by Tower Records, uh, up in the music businesses and all the businesses up and down Sunset. So, uh, you know, I uh, met an agent. I used to go in her office trying to meet me Meyer with Angel City Talent. I used to go in her office trying to sell her candy every day. She never bought no candy, however, I heard her one day speaking over the phone about a commercial. And when she hung up, you know, I got I, I, I what you do commercials. She told me she was an agent. She represented actors, and I told her I can act. That matter of fact, that's been my dream. She thought I was playing, but she, you know, she gave me a, a I hop commercial skit. She told me to go in the hall and do, study that, and come back in and do it. I did that, and the, she took me on, man. She told me to save up like you know a little money, and she, 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 she represented me in my very first audition, which was for a mini series called South of Sunset. I booked it, man. So, you know, I was like, it was on from then, you know? Now, you've been in a, a gang of movies in the 90s before you went to jail. Tell me about some of the more memorable projects that you've worked on. Well, I, I was in Tales from the Hood, Sunset Park, uh, Get on the Bus, Three Strikes, The Wood, Lockdown. I did The Heist. Uh, and uh, all of them are memorable projects because, you know, uh, but if, if, if one stuck out, I guess you, you could kind of say the wood and um, lockdown, you know, And uh, but working with Spike Lee was really, you know, like the height of the, working with the directors. I worked with Danny DeVito, who uh, executive produced Sunset Park. But every every one of my movies has their own special place in my heart. I don't um, really grade none of them higher than the other, you know, because I, I take everything I do serious. But, um, however... You know, I, I really had a chance to show my acting range in lockdown. And, you know, it was, it was a couple scene, scenes I didn't really I, agree with. But, you know, me being young, and I, I am an actor, so I should be able to act because that's what it is, you know. Um, and lockdown was really like the one that gave me the opportunity to show my range as an actor. Everything else, you know, is embedded in me from being raised in, you know, South Central L.A., man. Now tell me a little bit about the Antoine Fisher role that you auditioned for, right? Yes, sir. I, uh, I went in, I got called in, uh, and I read for, uh, I think it was Robbie Reed, and uh, Denzel Washington was in there. And, um, you know, I, I, I read for the part on camera, and I left, and I thought that was going to be it. I thought maybe I'd be getting the callbacks. But before I could step out, Denzel came out, and he called me, to the side in the casting uh, room. This uh, recorded he, call is from an inmate at a California correctional facility. He called me to the side and uh, he pulled me in the room and I was kind of nervous, like, man, what, what's going on? And uh, before I could really, you know, before I could really get set into that nervousness, he let me know, you know, you got the part. 
And, you know, it was a cameo role in there. A lot of people think maybe I had Antoine Fisher's part. I didn't have Antoine Fisher's part. I had the part of his best friend who, uh, he came to his house and I, 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 he robbed the liquor store, I guess you could say. You know, because at that time, I was, um, I guess they was trying to, I was familiar with those type of roles. Then, you know, people familiarized me with those type of roles. However, um, just to be working with Denzel, I don't care if it was a, a extra part, you know what I mean? If they gave me a chance to show, I was going to show my, my ability to, you know, to, to get something great about the opportunity of working with greatness, you know? Rockin it, rockin it.